us on behalf of TechSoup, we would like to welcome you to this webinar today. Um, as many of you know, TechSoup is a nonprofit 501c3, just like your organization, but our mission includes supporting nonprofits working with technology to make this a more equitable planet. And we do this by hosting a catalog of technology products priced specifically for nonprofits from major tech brands. And one of those brands here with us today is Questin Pro. We're fortunate to have Christine Welcher. She's the US Director for Nonprofits and Academic Institutions at Quest Pro. And she brought some friends along. They're going to um, tell us how nonprofits are using surveys and data collection to make smarter more informed decisions, which they turn into actionable goals. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here. I'm just gonna show you how you can engage in the chat room. We are recording this. You'll get the replay within 48 hours. If you would like to ask a question, feel free to type in the Q&A. I know a lot of you still type in the chat. We have plenty of people that will be here to answer your questions. If you learned something cool today, why don't you share it with us on social media at TechSoup. And as always, um, we when we have our webinars, we would like you to be courteous to everybody. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Christine. Welcome to all of you ladies, Emma, Nancy, Christine, and Joe. I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Aretha. Thank you for having us. And um, thank you to TechSoup for being such an awesome partner with Question Pro. Um, <clears throat> as Aretha said, I um, work for Question Pro, and my job is to work with nonprofits and educational institutions in the United States. And so today, um, I am joined by three wonderful organizations that are doing amazing work. So first, we have um, Emma Nolan, who is from Ar the Ark of Pennsylvania, and I'll let her introduce herself in just a second. Then we have Nancy Shirley. She works with Dream Partnerships. And Joe Crawford, who works with Arizona Adaptive Sports, Water Sports, sorry. So um, Emma, do you wanna uh, go first? I'll let you take over. Yep, thanks so much, Christine. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and just introduce um, the organization. All right, so as Christine said, my name is Emma Nolan. I work for the ARC of Pennsylvania. I am the manager of health initiatives. And just to give us a pretty broad overview of what the Arc of Pennsylvania does, um, we promote human rights of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and actively support their full inclusion and participation in the community throughout their lifetimes. But what I do personally is work on healthcare initiatives um, and public health for the intellectual and developmental disability community. So currently we're working on statewide efforts, which include investigating, educating, and reporting on challenges and solutions that Pennsylvania's disability community and its diverse populations, such as the intersection of rural communities and racial and ethnic minority groups have in accessing appropriate information and help during the COVID-19 pandemic, and how all of this intertwines with healthcare access and um, the ability to receive quality health care services. So that's all I have for my little quick introduction into the Arc of Pennsylvania, um, but I am excited to be able to answer any of your questions later on after introductions about Question Pro and about data collection. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, Nancy, would you like to go next? Here we go. Sorry about that. A little delay. <laughs> get her, get myself on mute and uh, video here. So uh, my name is Nancy Shirley. I am the executive administrator for Dream Partnership. Uh, Dream started out um, like many other disability organizations um, from a parent. Um, our our founder Donna Parton um, had a daughter, has a daughter, uh, Demi, who was graduating from um, high school, and Demi saw all of her um her other uh the students around her applying for college and she approached her mom and she's like where am i going to college mom and donna was like well i don't know demi let's find out so uh investigating pennsylvania um there was one program throughout the state 
for um, students with intellectual disabilities. So that's how DREAM came to be. So um, DREAM Partnership, um, basically the mission of DREAM Partnership is to develop scholarship and post-secondary education opportunities, which lead to independent living and employment for students with intellectual disabilities throughout Pennsylvania. Our mission is the DREAM Partnership's leadership and post-secondary education programs will empower individuals of all abilities to work, live, and contribute to a better society. So you'll see on the picture there, that's Donna um, on the left-hand side and Demi in the blue shirt. So DREAM Partnership was established in October of 2012. We're a nonprofit organization, uh, which means that we uh, write around grants, uh, we do not get any federal or state funding at this point. Uh, we provide technical assistance to colleges to start programs for students with intellectual disabilities. In addition to that, we fund those programs to get started. We also provide scholarship opportunities to the students who um, attend those programs. Um, those students uh, that are attending our programs do not usually qualify for other scholarship opportunities. Um, and so far, we've granted over 234 scholarships, totaling over $967,000. Outcomes for students um, basically is just employment and independent living. You'll see in the picture here, we've got um, Bruno and Nigel. The three gentlemen there are graduates from Arcadia University program, and they've actually started their own DJ business. And uh, that's a, one of our fundraisers. They come every year and they uh, provide the music for us. So 10 years ago, like I said, there was only one program, Temple University. Uh, throughout the last 10 years, we have expanded um, and developed 11 programs throughout the state. There's a nice list for you, I won't go through that. Um, we also provide scholarships to the students that attend those programs. Um, and last year we were able to expand our network to include other programs that we haven't funded, but actually exist throughout Pennsylvania. So uh, we were able to expand our program to include Gwen and Mercy University and St. Joseph's University as well and grant um, scholarships to those students. So there you see lots of pictures of our scholarship awardees. Um, and I also wanna say that, um, you know, having students with intellectual disabilities on campus um, is life-changing for those students, but it's also life-changing for the students around them, their peer mentors, the teachers, um, it's, it's enabling the um, students that don't have disabilities to see the capabilities of those individuals. And, you know, they're going to be the next employers. They're going to be the, the advocates for those individuals in the workplace. So that's really um, the point is to have all of the um, students, regardless of disability, to learn um, together and um, hopefully be employed. So there's internship um, programs available at these programs. There's job shadowing as in addition to that, there's resume building, soft skills building, the students um, audit classes and they can attend any classes that are interested uh, interest to them. So that's my little splur about, uh, about Dream Partnership. And uh, we're in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. Thanks, Christine. Thank you so much, Nancy. And now from Pennsylvania, we're gonna go all the way down to Arizona. Cho, take it away. Joe, so you're on mute if you're speaking. There we go. How's that? Give me just one second. Perfect. Okay. Let me go straight to sharing my screen and we'll go to share. So we are an adaptive water sports program and we serve um, children and adults with disabilities ages three and up and all different disabilities. Our base is of course in Arizona and we provide adaptive water sports um, for people with spinal cord injury, brain injury, stroke, Parkinson's. We have an ALS day, a kid's day, um, <clears throat> amputee day. So it's really come a long way. 
and many of our lakes, specifically one, is very wheelchair accessible. So we have Hoyer lifts to help people get in and out of the water because as you know, access to recreation is a huge challenge. So what we do is we break barriers um, across the board. And what another part of our ministry is to bring families back together. Sometimes after a person sustains an injury or is born with one, um, they go to therapy and the rest of the family goes to the gym and our program brings everyone together. So here's a mom with her kids all going tubing and she has a spinal cord injury. So that's another part of the fun things that we get to do. This is adaptive water skiing. We take people um, with significant types of um, mobility issues where they can't lift their arms up or um, uh, and then they can't stand, but they can sit and ski. And it's very exciting. And it's also um, breaking barriers and um, you know, attacking some of those fear components you have after you have an injury and you don't want to get hurt again. So we're super excited about doing some of those types of things. This year, we've served over 350 athletes around the state of Arizona, um, at least, plus their family members. This wake surfing is huge. I don't know if you guys are involved in water sports in your area, but um, um, like I said, we take we do an amputee day and wake surfing is huge. <clears throat> so there's some wake surfing. And then there, the big thing now is seated wake surfing. So again, breaking barriers, getting that adaptive equipment out to these athletes and so they can have some fun. There's some wakeboarding that we do. And for folks who aren't, aren't able to walk long distances, it's, it's amazing how they can continue to, to wakeboard. And so we also do that for the blind and visually impaired as well. We do kayaking around the state of Arizona. Again, for all disabilities in some of those rural areas where folks wouldn't have the opportunity to come down to our home lake. So we received a trailer last year. Now we go to Lake Havasu, Lake Powell, Swirl Lake. So we're hitting more people with disabilities around the state of Arizona. And that's, that's ultimately our goal is to get more and more people out and active. What we know is that 70% of the people who come out to our programs initiate doing something new with their life. And that could be driving, um, asking somebody out on a date, taking a, a college class, um, you know, looking at a new career. And then of course we do boating and fishing. So that, that in a nutshell is what we do. And then we have the most amazing um, volunteers that are out there. And they have, we've had volunteers that have been with us for almost 25 years. So when people come, they like to stick around. And then of course, training the new generation of, uh, of young volunteers who have a lot more energy. <laughs> um, so we're super grateful for all of that. That was awesome. I love the pictures. Thank you. So yes, thank you, ladies. Um, we just wanted to kind of give you all a background on these organizations so you kind of understand when we're talking about collecting data, you know, how they might be using it um, uh, and things like that. So without any further ado, we're going to just kind of jump right in. Um, just a couple of things. One, yes, this is uh, about data collection and how um, nonprofits are using data and insights to plan for the future. Uh, and it, these um, organizations are kind of in all different uh, experience levels of collecting data. Some are just starting, some have been doing it for a while. So um, please feel free to share your questions in the chat box or the Q&A. Um, we'll be monitoring both of them, and I just have some basic questions to kind of get the get the ball rolling here. So I'll be the um, moderator facilitator, and I'll ask some questions, and then I will just leave it up to Emma, Nancy, and Joe to uh, to answer um, as they will. So the first one is uh, pretty basic. Why did you start collecting surveys? Why did you feel the need um, that you needed to have this kind of data? Uh, to track and and how are you using it basically? So who would like to start? I can start us out. Um, so at the Arc of Pennsylvania, we're currently working on an initiative um, where we're gathering information and data from statewide participants. So we're doing some focus groups and some individual interviews, but we wanted to also have a format online with that online survey to reach as many people as possible and really ask those questions um, that are important to our data collection surrounding healthcare disparities for people with disabilities and have it as accessible as possible for um, um, a wide range of people. 
I'll hop in there. Um, I also work with Emma at the Arc of Pennsylvania um, as a consultant as well. So um, we started, um, in addition to the data collection piece of it, the Arc was also using Question Pro for um, surveys. Uh, it, it actually started out after we had a conference. So we had the um, Advocacy um, and Policy Day conference. And what would normally happen is they would eat or they would um, snail mail an actual paper survey uh, to find out how um, the attendees, you know, enjoyed the, the different uh, sessions that we had, things like that. So that's kind of uh, where it started for me. I just went out basically and looked, you know, what kind of survey um, software is out there. And that's how I stumbled upon Question Pro, um, which was so easy to use. The um, the free version is amazing. It gives you so much information. I mean, we had we had started to um, utilize our website um, for that type of survey, um, which was great to collect data. However, it didn't give us the analytics, um, so we we had to manually calculate everything. Um, and Question Pro does that for you. Um, so we've used it in many, many different ways, uh, strategic planning, um, surveys of the chapters to find out what their demographics is like, um, racial demographics. Um, we've used it for uh, training, uh, post-training evaluations. Um, I use it for Dream Partnership. Uh, every year we do a survey of the college programs, which asks um, what type of how many people do you have? What type of programs are you running? Do you have residential um, programs? Uh, how many students graduated? How many students have work, um, you know, have, have graduated and have work? How many internships? Things like that. So um, it's, it's great to be able to collect that type of data um, and go from year to year um, to see the difference between um, the programs and, um, you know, to get the counts too. So when I apply for a grant, that information is invaluable that I can go back and I can say this, you know, we've graduated this many people this year and uh, this percentage um, is, is working. Excellent. Um, Joe, you actually just started with us recently. Do you, um, you have anything you want to share? You know what? We are very excited about it. Um, we're as as much as we've been doing the program for years. It's been under different umbrellas. So for us, um, we had just met, um, hit our fourth year mark, and we really need to start um, collecting the data of pre and post. You know, with the, many of our athletes, it's their very first time, and quality of life is a huge issue. As I'm sure we're we're all sitting here recognizing that. And so to, for us to be able to, to really measure not just your quality of life, but your health and all those disparities that we've talked about and access and what keeps you from being active, you know, and how can we help you overcome those barriers, then that helps us with the grant writing. Um, and that's that's the goal there. And also us from a service line. Too much in one day. Is it just enough? How are we doing um, serving our consumers and their families? You know, and is this a blessing or are there times where it's more of a hardship to get there? Or which just kind of understanding what we can do to better serve our, our, our amazing athletes who come with all ages. Um, the other piece that we do um, is the educational component. So many people think that if you have a disability, you're, you know, they're only going to do adaptive water sports. If you're a young person, our oldest athlete is 88. So we really, you know, when you look at grants, it's for the aging, you know, um, and, and side note, I'm 54. I'm just about ready to get in that world, <laughs> you know? So um, anyway, that's, that's kind of where we're at to hit, hit those bigger areas that sometimes are overlooked because there isn't a quantitative Yes, when you're over 55, when you're over 65, you still play and you should. So that's what we're doing. Excellent, excellent. Um, and so kind of along the lines, we, we have a couple of questions coming in from the Q&A. Um, someone has, has asked, uh, what avenues have you found to, to get responses from your community? Have there been uh, more effective ways that you've been able to get people to answer your questions? I know some of you mentioned something about, um, you know, like pre and post um, programs uh, that usually works, but are there other ways that you've been able to get um, responses? 
Um, for us, I think retention or survey response rate is always a big issue. I think anyone who's collecting data has to think of that going into it. Um, but having more like individualized emails sent out to people with the link to your survey, posting it on as many social media platforms as your organization has. I know we utilize Facebook, we have an Instagram, we have a Twitter. Um, so just really reaching out to as many people as possible and make it as accessible as possible as well. We have our survey available in English as well as Spanish. So really just taking that extra step to make it as accessible for as many people as possible will really increase your survey response and it will be appreciated by the communities you're trying to reach. Yeah, great points, Emma. Thank you. Um, and I know that we've worked with you, especially with ARC of Pennsylvania, and trying to make it as accessible as possible uh, for everyone to take. So um, I can I can speak a little bit to that. Um, in the work that Emma and I are doing with um, at the ARC of Pennsylvania with the Department of Health, um, one of our initiatives is to um, track disparities and, and to get input. Um, and we've been able to utilize um, question, post, question pro specifically throughout our Zoom meetings. So we schedule Zoom meetings um, with individuals. We do uh, listening sessions um, with them to get um, you know, information and feedback. Um, and we utilize it during the meeting. So we actually use the format, the question pro format to go through the questions that we're asking them and ask participants to fill it out while we're Zooming. Um, and at least it, it, if they're not able to do it while we're in the meeting, then um, they're familiar with it so they can go back at a later time um, and, and complete it then. And we've, we've had a pretty good success rate, um, response, re um, response success rate um, doing that as well. Um, and some of the, the features that we've used um, when we do breakout sessions and some of these larger meetings is video. So Emma will go through and video herself uh, speaking to a specific question, giving some background information that you can embed right into the survey. And we play the video and then go right into the answer. So that's a really nice feature that we've been able to utilize, um, especially when you're, um, you know, depending on who your audience is, um, video sometimes gets across a little bit better than a long document does. Great, and then kind of along those lines as well, we've had a couple of questions about, um, you know, how do you develop a survey so that you're not putting too much stress on the participants. So how do you make it more engaging? How do you make it you know, maybe more fun? Um, obviously the video is one way. Do you all have any other um, examples? I think starting out with um, maybe a easier question, not going right into it, kind of having an introduction paragraph um, or a couple bullets of what you're looking for in terms of responses for the survey, and then making it a little personalized, ask them their name if that's kind of, if that's the sort of information you're looking to collect, um, what region they're from in your state, again, if that's relevant to your data collection. And then we use a lot of qualitative methods. So we'll ask a broad question, and then we insert that um, paragraph answer format. So they're able to type in what exactly they want to say, and it allows the data collection to be a lot more personalized and I think it helps people really elaborate on what they want to say in a survey and that also makes it a little bit less intimidating because they can say as little or as much as they want to. Great. Joe, do you have anything you want to add? Um, no, I'm just really kind of getting getting used to all these different opportunities, but I am learning a ton from Emma and Nancy. So, <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, that's what this is for. Um, so another, Christine, oh, I can jump ahead. in real quick. Yeah. That uh, Question Pro has a great um, uh, rating system too that does the smiley face to the frowny face, and that um, makes it really easy for 
um, you know, individuals just to kind of choose their mood versus, um, you know, uh, dislike and agree, totally agree, you know, that type of thing. The smiley face is nice. They do up, down, you know, up thumbs, down thumbs, you know, those, those types of options um, within the program are, are really nice to use. It's different than, um, you know, most, uh, most just yes, no kind of questions. Christine, you're on. I'm on mute. There we go. <laughs> Rick actually asked a question earlier about um, CMRs or, or CRMs. Uh, this isn't exactly about that, but are you using any specific software to keep track of your participants and your clients? Really, we're just using um, Question Pro. I mean, it's um, you can export the information into Excel. Um, it, each survey is, um, you know, unique. It can be unique depending on what type of information you're getting, and um, the program makes it really easy to export. So you can export the information into a PDF, a Word document. A PowerPoint presentation. They give you the graphs that they do it. The program does so much. The analytics is, is amazing. Um, so uh, right now um, in neither Dream Partnership nor uh, the Arc of Pennsylvania, do we have it tied to a CRM system? Um, we pretty much just utilize um, Question Pro as the database. Great, that's good to hear that um, <laughs> it's working well for you. Uh, it's kind of along the same lines with the creating surveys, um, we have a question. Has anyone on here used multiple languages in a survey? Go ahead. Uh, they're just asking, you know, how easy is it? Was it able to, uh, like, I suppose then once you get the answers back, um, how were you able to um, interpret all of that? We had ours available in English and Spanish, um, and it was pretty simple on that part. We actually we do have a translator um, that we work with for like larger documents, but this was pretty um, easy to like translate and understand what was going on um, in those data collections. But I know Nancy, you had a little bit more information about the translation services that we used. Yes, yeah, so. Um... I will say um, the the multiple language is really nice because you can just you literally say which languages do you want this to be interpreted into, and it does the automatic interpretation. And then when the person brings it up, the very first question is what language do you want to use? So um, they get to choose Spanish or English in our in our option. Now I will say that the um, when they answer in Spanish the answers are in Spanish. So we were able to use other um, translation services. Um, we we utilize um, uh, Microsoft 365. And on the online version of Word, you can have, there's translation available. So we were able just to copy, um, I believe Excel does as, as well, has that translation for you. So you're able to either copy it or just export it into Excel and then do the translation there. And it, it, it translated it well enough that we were able to get, um, to get the idea of, of what that person is saying. Um, and then we have a couple of questions just about the platform in general. So I'll just kind of quickly answer those. Um, there are templates. So when you get started, um, when you first go on and create your first survey, there'll be a question, do you want to start from scratch or do you want to use one of our templates? And you just click on that and there's a drop down uh, for a whole bunch of different industries and um, uh, I guess topics of the survey. So you can go into any of those templates and kind of look around, get ideas for questions. You can edit any of those questions and answers to fit more with your organization. So yes, that's available. Um, is the website uh, mobile? Yes, we do have mobile keys. So with every um, user, uh, even with the free one, we have one um, 
mobile device key that comes with it. So you can sync it to a tablet or your phone or something like that. And then you can go out and collect data um, without Wi-Fi and then come home or back to the office and uh, sync it uh, at the end when you do have uh, Wi-Fi again. So that works out really well for people, especially if they're doing uh, any kind of community functions, um, booths at fairs, things like that. Um, I don't know, has anyone used the mobile? Not yet, no. Uh, it's there and we do have people using it, but it's it's not, um, I think more people would like to use it. They just haven't uh, quite figured out how to use it yet. Um, and then uh, I guess the next question is, um, so survey design, um, you, you all are asking questions, you've been doing surveys. Uh, how did you kind of come up with how to, how to design a good survey? Did, are there resources that you've been able to find online or in other places? I think just going into it um, with the background of what you're looking to get out of the survey will help you a lot in the design and the question formats that you want to use. Um, as I said before, we really collect more qualitative data and um, more like life experiences type of answers we're looking for from our participants. Um, so it's really helpful to like before you even begin the survey, knowing what type of data you're looking to collect. And then the Question Pro website really is helpful in um, the design of your actual survey itself. And it can show you like what each um, question type will give you in terms of like data analysis. So that was really helpful when trying to figure out the format that best worked for us. Yeah, I think the first stage of any survey is to write it down, just brainstorm, okay, what information do we want to get, um, and then go from there. Um, Question Pro also has the option um, for the logic. So if, um, like, say I uh, have a, um, you know, I uh, like or, or dis dislike something is the question, and the person indicates dislike. Well, you can have the logic question to say, okay, if this if this person answers this way, then give them the option to do this. So it would be um, like an open ended question, like, okay, why did why why did you answer the question that way? Um, which I think is is really helpful. But um, I agree with Emma one hundred percent. It's um, you really have to think about what type of information you want to get. Um, open ended questions are are great if you're asking somebody to relate a story, but if you're asking them, um, you know, how do you feel about something or a yes or no question, um, sometimes those are easier. So you want to try to design the survey um, to give you the information that you need versus an open-ended question. Because if you do an open-ended question, you're Emma can attest to this, you're sifting through all of that information, having to code it, um, where if you have a yes or no question, it's really easy. Or if you have a ranking question or um, dislike, like, or I agree with, or I don't, I disagree. Um, those type of questions are, are a lot easier um, to see uh, the value of, okay, so, you know, out of 180% of the people chose this or said this or agreed with this statement. So I think it's important to, to format it in a way that the system is doing all the work that you're not manually going through and sifting through paragraphs of information, trying to, um, to rank or trying to uh, code things and group things together manually. Let the system um, do do what you need it to do. And also when you design it, you want to make sure that you're gathering the information that you could use maybe later. So if you're putting it out to a group, um, it may not be, be necessary in that context to know what county they're from or what state they're from or what zip code they're from, but you may be able to utilize that information later for a different purpose. So um, getting that information up front is much easier than going back and trying to ask somebody 
to um, do a diff another survey, which includes that information. So to kind of think ahead of, okay, how am I gonna use this information? Um, can I use it in a different way, uh, maybe for something else? Um, and then, you know, having them answer those questions up front um, is much easier to get the data up front than it is to go back and get it. Great, great answers. Um, okay, I'm just going to keep going with the Q&A because we actually have a lot of questions coming through. Um, this is kind of a, I'm going to put these two together as sort of a two-parter. Um, one, the first one is, what information have you found is most useful when you're writing grants? And then kind of in that same vein, um, how are you using the data that you are collecting to enhance your strategy, to um, work on donor relations, um, probably for grants as well? Um, so it's kind of a two-parter, but I'll just throw it out there for whoever wants to take it. I'm sorry, can you repeat the first question that you said? Hold on. Um, so the first one is, what kind of information are you finding is most useful when you're applying for grants, if, if you have applied for grants? Um, and then in that, when you're um, getting this data back, how are you using it then? Are you using it um, in a, strat a strategic way to um, you know, make decisions about your organization, where you're going to go? Are you using it to help in donor relations? Um, are you using it for grants, things like that. Got it. Thank you. So um, we it really helps us in terms of like thinking about your methodology before you're even um, thinking about a grant or if you're working on some deliverables or strategies, um, really looking at your methodology and what you're going to be doing with your data analysis and how that informs your decisions. I know for us, we're working right now on um, some solutions work pertaining to healthcare barriers for people with disabilities, and that will inform the Pennsylvania Department of Health as, long, um, as well as other stakeholders across the state. So it's really helpful to be able to keep all of our information in one place and be able to analyze it as much as possible um, to really see what themes and what subjects pertaining to solutions are um, rising to the surface and really gaining traction. Um, so it definitely helps us in terms of strategies moving forward with our grant work. Great. Yeah, we've been able to utilize a lot of that um, the information um, to support the work that we're doing um, for grants. Um, Emma's been able to um, analyze a lot of the data because a lot of you know the information is quantitative, um, having to go through and manually um, you know report through people's stories and um, to code that um, so that we can create a report for um, barriers and um, and work in solutions things like that. Um, for uh, you know, surveys we do surveys for all different types of reasons. Um, so you can utilize like we used it for our strategic plan. So we're getting ready to go back to um, you know, okay, we're a year later. Let's see where we are with that plan. So you can use them as um, progress reports, basically, um, you know, pre post test type of thing. Um, I utilize it for doing partnership with our employment um, employment numbers, and then also how many students we're serving um, each year. The programs that we started serve each year. I mean, that's that's really helpful to be able to go back to that information um, and and justify what we're doing as far as grant work goes. Um, I think the the pre and post type surveys. Um, you know, like your the demographics, you know, of, of employees within the chapters. Okay, well, we took that last year. Let's see where we are again this year and to utilize the information um, that way. And I know Emma touched on, um, you know, having the information all in one place. Uh, Question Pro makes it really easy to just copy a survey and modify it. Um, and um, to be able to import information as well. Emma did uh, some of that when we have um, individuals that we called 
um, and went through the paper survey, and then we're able to we were able to up, upload that information um, into uh, the database so that it's all in one spot. Um, that was really really helpful. Um, you know, you can utilize that as well. Just walking through somebody, um, you know, on the phone on it, you know, with using your paper copy and literally doing it on Question Pro and filling it out for them. Like that's another way to um, to complete, you know, the surveys as well. So it, you know, it all depends on what what type of information you're what you're looking for. You know, what uh, what the situation is. And it's really easy to um, do multiple surveys um, without reinventing the wheel. Thank you. Um, and Joe, I know you uh, mentioned um, some funding and working with um, some grants. Um, how how are you using or how have you used surveys in the past, even maybe if it hasn't been with Question Pro? Um, so what we have done in the past is like I had had mentioned earlier about, you know, their quality of life and how that changes. And then we'd like to measure how long does it take you to get out there from from your injury stroke or whatever to get out to start playing again. So that's another area we'd like to cover just for our own self, you know, for not necessarily for grant opportunities, but because I think most people recognize that. But the other piece, too from our standpoint is to hit more people around our state um, and, and really kind of go towards those guys. And just sometimes you think that there's a need there and sometimes there isn't. And that's what we need to find out. Is there really a need in these different parts of the state or is it, or are there two people? Is, is it worth it for two? Well, to us, it is worth it for two. And then how you write that in a grant to let people know that those two count just as much as the, you know, others you know, the, the other 300 that we serve. So that's, I think, going to be the fun part about the survey is really kind of reaching those guys out there um, to get them active. I think that'll be the blessing of the survey in, in, in general. And you mentioned um, sometimes you ask questions that are just for your internal knowledge. Um, are you then using those answers to make decisions about like how you um, structure programming in the future? Or I think you kind of touched on where you where you're going to have uh, expanding your services. But um... well, and and even to that point too, Christine, like what types of services when we go there do do you want? And then are we reaching all those people in that area? How can we better reach them? And then the other part too is what do they want? Just because we have these seven, you know, water sports programs doesn't mean they want to do all those. Sometimes it's it's amazing. You think, well, we've got to bring everybody, and they're like, well, I just really want to go fishing. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? So trying to find out what what they want and what their barriers are, and making sure that we have the right of equipment, and then making sure that all of our staff, our volunteers, are trained for whatever their needs are. Um, because we pull into other lakes that are just not accessible at all. And we know how to overcome those and get people in wheelchairs on the sand. We have portable sidewalks. I mean, just knowing the equipment that you need to get. And that grant writing is so important too, because this every lake is so different and every adaptate, adaptation is different too. So to make sure we have that wherever we pull in the driveway. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it takes a lot of organization and planning up front for some of these um, expeditions that you go on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I guess kind of to the point um, that I, when I asked the question, if you've used other survey software besides Question Pro, um, I can close my ears or whatever, but I mean, feel free to tell people um, how they compared or what you liked better, that kind of thing. Um, go ahead. So okay. I've utilized, um, sorry, Christine, is there something else? I was I've just going to ask if anyone um, actually had, go ahead. <laughs> I've utilized um, SurveyMonkey, Google Forms, and Question Pro. And then more quantitatively, I've done like our studio, SPSS, SAS, if anyone's familiar with like biostatistics software. Um, and each, I think, offers different things depending on again what your organization is looking to collect and what type of data analytics um, is necessary for whatever grant or project your organization is aiming to work on. Um, I will say 
Question Pro and SurveyMonkey are kind of similar in their um, setup, like the format of the questions and the type of questions you can input, but the analytics is a little bit more advanced on Question Pro and it just allows you to really dive deeper into the data and separate it out um, and really focus on some individual responses. And I, I just like not to um, really sell Question Pro, but I definitely think those analytics are a little bit more advanced on this platform. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I know the question came in about the Google Forms versus Question Pro. The analytics is the answer to that. I mean, it's amazing um, that you can just you know, get the information and they give you the charts and you can do a pie chart, you can see a line chart, you can see a bar graph, um, just the options of, of what the analytics look like. And yeah. Emma, in our, uh, the, the project that we, that we do based on the um, health disparities, um, was able to, you know, we're, we're collecting data from different, uh, from across the states, but then are also specifically to counties. So um, Emma was able to um, have all the information for the entire county, but then also break it into separate groups. Um, and oh, another thing, the word clouds. Uh, we loved the word clouds. That's an amazing feature. Um, and it's, you don't have to work at it. It does it itself. Um, it's phenomenal. Um, but to be able to have the entire data set, but then also be able to break it up into different regions was very helpful um, in the project that 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 we are working on um, so that we can actually see the difference between the regions. Because as Joe said, you know, you, you may have, um, you know, you may think that, you uh, have the answers, but um, you know, uh, for one region it might work fine, but then another region um, they may need something totally different. So um, it's it's interesting to be able to separate out uh, the different segments and see the data based on region, uh, which does make a difference, especially here in Pennsylvania. You have urban and a lot of rural counties, so the rural needs are a lot different than the urban needs are. Great, thank you. Um, and kind of along those lines, you are working with some sensitive information. I'm sure all of your organizations deal with people, um, different levels of medical um, needs and things like that. So how do you address confidentiality? How have you kind of worked that in, um, in how you use the program or, you know, um, if you've thought about that in any way and had to deal with it? So I know something that we do is always state that their name will never be attached to their answer. Um, and that's pretty um, just set in stone across most data collections. You always want to make sure that your participants know that even if you do use the information that they provide, it's never going to go back to their name. None of their identifying information is going to be released um, with their data that they are inputting into the system. That's a really important step in confidentiality and maintaining that relationship with your respondents. Um, but other than that, I think it's pretty um, set in stone, like the confidentiality agreement, and it's pretty secure um, in the data collection and um, that just all those confidentiality. Great. Uh, and also, all of you are working with uh, differently abled people. And so we've had a few questions come through on the chat and uh, Q&A about accessibility. So uh, we do have accessibility. We are 508 compliant. But have you um, actually used it yourselves yet? I personally haven't used it myself. Um, I know we work really hard and um, to make sure everything's in plain language, so in easily understood by as many people as possible. Um, and then a lot of our respondents do utilize screen readers. Um, so I'm sure it, I, I think it has been tested for our organization. I think Nancy can speak a little bit further onto that. Yeah, yeah. So the assistive technology um, that, most people would use would be a screen reader or voice voice to command you know voice to word um it it, it is functional um we we love the video option um which would give um you know video and then also 
the sound. So rather than reading it, you, you hear somebody saying it. And um, I know that Question Pro, at least in the research, um, the research level does have the capability to record answers as well. Um, I know we, we were talking about that, um, you know, initially when we, we looked at the research, research model, uh, which is, was, which is pretty interesting and exciting for, for our demographic. Um, unfortunately, the, uh, the limit, uh, the time limit per recording uh, was a little bit too short for our demographic. So, um, but there are definitely, um, it, it's, it's definitely accessible um, on, on different levels. Uh, yeah, there's actually, so when you're setting up your survey, um, when you go into designs, there's actually a theme that's called accessibility. And when you click on that, it turns everything into black and white um, so that you don't have to worry about like colorblindness, for example. And then anytime you add a graphic or um, a logo, anything like that, you'll see a little uh, person pop up that um, reminds you that you need to put in alt text for screen readers, things like that. So. Um, yeah, some of that stuff is already built in and will we'll help you with it. But those um, that theme especially uh, is what our accessibility team has been working with. And um, we actually have like a whole department that's been working with that to try to make surveys more equitable and, um, for, you know, for everyone, for people to design them and um, use them and as well as um, participants when they're taking them. Um, let's see. I think so the I think we have like two more questions on here if I'm missing any questions please just put them back in because I've obviously missed them um demos are demos available uh yes I will put my information in the chat and you feel free to reach out to us and then I will also put in um, the link to TechSoup because they have a great offer with us um you can get two licenses I think for $97 for a year um so that works out really well. And then uh, let's see, what is what was that other question? I just went past it. Um, okay, uh, panel, could you please give us any advice regarding um, like general education that you went through to create surveys, um, developing methodology for your survey projects? Um, I don't know, did you have some training? before you took this job, or are you just kind of learning it on the fly? So I definitely utilized that demo service that Christine was just um, talking about. It was very helpful in giving you like a really good introduction to the features that Question Pro offers and the analytics you can perform within that. Um, but besides that, I mean, training, I, I didn't come into this role knowing Question Pro, the format at all. Um, so it was really new to me. But there's so many features on their website that guide you like step by step of what you should be doing um, for your survey. And it really helps to, again, just know what type of questions you are looking to get, whether that be quantitative or qualitative data, um, and what type of answers your organization is looking for before trying to set up your survey. Um, so that's my word of advice for um, survey formats. I concur totally with Emma. Um, I did not um, have any kind of background for surveying. Um, I, again, I was looking for something other than our um, website to, to use for a survey link. I came across uh, Question Pro, so easy to use. You just really just choose the type of question that you want. Um, it's it's easy for the analytics on the background. I love, or on the back end, I love the idea that you can just export to Word or PDF um, or, or a PowerPoint presentation and it gives you all that analytics. It gives you the graphs. Um, like in, in my case, uh, the respondents are all, uh, they all receive their own individual number, uh, their own identification number. Um, so for the, for the programs, the colleges, um, in a Word document, I'm able to export all of that. And then the answers come in, you know, as respondent number, blah, 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 respondent number, blah, blah, blah. And in a Word, I could just say, okay, find this and replace it with Temple University. 
and it makes it really easy uh, to to utilize to be, copy and paste it. Um, it's super super user friendly. It does not take a lot um, to to get started. You know, I'd, I'd like to add to that since this is the new part for us as we're continuing to build and, and grow. I was on the phone yesterday with support, you know, on the live chat and uh, the support system has just been amazing. So it's really nice to know that you can just go directly and get assistance right now, um, you know, while you're working on some stuff so that I was really appreciative of all that. That's that's good to hear. Our team works hard at that. And, and we do have um, people all over the world. Um, our offices are all over the world. So uh, even when you email, um, like one of our general emails, someone is always answering, someone's always live on the chat. Uh, so it's, it, it might be a bot, like the very first question, just so they get you to the right team. But um, there's always somebody behind the scenes checking on that and monitoring it. So even at two in the morning when you're <laughs> trying to do something for the next day, we have someone there that can help you. Um, so we're, we're pretty much done with, we're coming up to the end of the hour. So I just really quickly, the last thing I just kind of want to throw out to each of you, if you could just take a couple seconds, um, you know, what it, what is the best advice that you have for organizations who are just starting some sort of a data collection program? I think my biggest advice is to not be intimidated. A lot of times the words like data collection and data analytics can have a lot of anxiety behind them and it can be a daunting task to really try and reach a, a large number of people and make sure that your questions are relevant to your study and are asking this right thing in the right way. So I think just doing as much um, research on your own about the format that you're looking to do and the methodology that you're looking to do for your project or your grant is really important and talking to as many people as possible as well attending webinars like this is the first step in really learning the application that you're looking to purchase or utilize um, and getting as much information as possible before making your survey. I have to agree with Emma again, um, and really just formatting it, um, the design is important as far as formatting it into um, questions that are easy to answer and that you'll get information on the back end and the analytics, so a yes or no question, um, something that is very specific. Try to stay away from the open-ended questions if possible, but if you also need that information, certainly utilize it. Um, and you know there are ways to, to, to work that in um, into the analytics as well. But really the design up front, um, you know, brainstorm with people, find out exactly what type of information you really want to get, and then just go from there. The, uh, the program itself is so much, it's so easy to use. Um, and I love the feature to um, be able to edit the link as well. So your survey uh, link can be changed to whatever you need it to be. So, you know, you can include, you know, staff survey in the link or uh, the arc of PA listening session in the link. You know, you can make it um, unique to what your survey is. You know, the only thing that I would add um, is, is taking your time while you're writing the survey, recognizing that time is our most precious commodity and it's very valuable. And so take your time when you're making the survey, you're asking your consumers to take their time to make their programs better, um, your program better. So I would just say, you know, we're always in such a hurry. I don't know if I'm just speaking on for just myself, you know, overseeing an organization, but uh, uh, just take your time. And then that way you benefit their time as well. So everybody gets blessed right there. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me and for my wonderful co-hosts here today. Um, it was great. I, I got to learn more about all of your organizations, too, which is always um, kind of fun um, for me anyway, because I, I uh, sometimes I only see the business side of things or the questions or, you know, um, how to do a certain thing. So it's, it's fun to get to know you a little bit more. And um, thank you again, TechSoup, for having us. Uh, uh, I don't know, Aretha, do you have any last um, things you need to say? 
No, I'm going to say thank you. This was amazing. Emma, Joe, Nancy, Christine, thank you so much. You all have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for taking your time. Bye, everybody.